Growing orchids may seem daunting, but they needn't be. And once you start, you'll be rewarded for years and years. I'm in the far south of Sydney visiting an orchid emporium and a grower whose life was destined to be devoted to orchids from the moment her father brought one home nearly 50 years ago. Welcome to the strange and addictive world of orchids. Barbara Kipriotis is an orchid grower with a blooming business that includes a nursery near Jarvis Bay on the New South Wales south coast and a showroom here at a Sydney home in Heathcote. Hi Barbara. Hi Tammy. What a place you have here. It's gorgeous, isn't it? And you get to work in this every I know, day. I'm really lucky. <laughs> I roll out of bed and roll into this orchid paradise. <laughs> I love it. And tell me, how did this all get started? Yeah, when I was young, I was about four and Dad started bringing home orchids because he got addicted, because they're so beautiful. And he just kept bringing them home. <laughs> it didn't stop after the Did, one. No, it kept on bringing them. Every week there'd be a new one that would be on the dining room table and then the next week there'd be another one and eventually there was no dining room table. So it really consumed your, your lives. Yeah, it did, it really did. Especially after school, as soon as I got home, I'd chuck my bag in the corner and run outside and start doing the work that was needed, weeding, and watering and writing labels and standing next to dad while he um, repotted orchids and planted or started to breed them. <laughs> so really that was your homework? Yeah, that was my homework, yeah. <laughs> Dad's still alive, um, but he's really alive in the orchids. That's passed on to me now too because I find myself much more comfortable being outside with the orchids than being inside cooking a meal. <laughs> I can totally understand. <laughs> so Dad and I built this together. And then once we finished building, he handed this to me. Um, he had been growing it for 20 years and I've been growing it for 20 years now. So it's like so 40, 40 years, years old. Yep. So this is a paphiopedalum. Yeah. And also known as a slipper orchid, right? A slipper right? orchid, yeah. yeah. Or, um, or orchid growers call it paths. Uh, these are paths. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is a bit of a mouthful. It is a bit of a mouthful. <laughs> and it's namely called that because of how it looks, right? Yeah, it looks like yeah. a, um, a lady's slipper or a shoe. Yeah. Yeah. Flowering it takes about seven months because, first of all, you've got the buds popping up and that takes about three months until they open. And then once the flowers are open, they last for about four months. Wow. Yeah, they're the, one of the longest lasting of all the orchid flowers. And so despite how delicate the flowers look, it's a really hardy plant. It's a very hardy plant. Orchids have a bit of a reputation for being tricky to grow. Where do you recommend we start? Oh, I have a few favourites, but I do issue a health warning because they can be very addictive. <laughs> So we've got cymbidiums here. I love them for all the various colours and the shapes that they have. Why are they your favourite? For exactly the same reason. Just the variety is amazing and each flower has its own little personality. They're so easy to grow. They don't need a lot of attention. We water about once a week in the winter and maybe three times a week in the summer, but depending, of course, on the weather. If it's been raining, you don't worry about that. And food, they only really need feeding twice a year, and we do it once on Mother's Day and once on Melbourne Cup Day. And they're also really one of the most hardy ones, right? They're very hardy, yeah. They kind of like to be in their pots for a long time, so you don't have to repot them very often. Um, the main thing is not to have them in too much sun, just filtered light through uh, a tree or shade cloth or a bit of an awning. Yeah, yeah. so no direct sunlight. No direct them. sunlight. Yeah. And yeah. are they quite cold hardy too? They're very cold hardy. Um, in fact, the cold weather helps them to produce the flowers. They need that cold weather to actually uh, sort of snap them into flowering. You couldn't grow them in Queensland, these ones. Okay, <laughs> so if anywhere in a sort of cool, warm, temperate cool, climate warm is okay. Temperate. Yeah, yeah. That, that would be very good. Cymbidiums have um, pseudobulbs and the purpose of those are to feed the rest of the plant. But after a time, there's uh, too many in the pot, which you can then remove and plant on their own yep. and then they'll shoot off again. So Tammy, these are one of my favourite orchids. These are called Sylogeny orchids. 
And they have very similar care conditions to the cymbidium? They do have very similar care. The only difference is that they're much smaller, so they can fit in smaller places. Yeah, perfect for, you know, I guess apartments and balconies. Balconies, exactly. Yeah. yeah, and they flower every year really easily and they have a beautiful fragrance. Oh, nice. Yeah. This one here is called Unchained Melody. Isn't that a great oh, name? great. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> Cylogenies have a pseudobulb as well that you can remove and plant on its own too. But there is a difference. The cymbidiums are terrestrial, so they'll grow in pots or in a nice rockery, whereas the cylogeny would much prefer to be up on a board or in a tree or hanging from a wall. Because yeah, that's how they naturally grow in the wild, they're exactly. epiphytic. Yeah, they're yeah. on trees, yeah. yeah. And orchids are pretty simple to pot on. Use a high quality bark mixture. It comes in different grades. Use medium grade for cymbidiums and a chunkier grade for orchids that need better drainage, like this cattleya. Check the roots look healthy. Divide if you have loads of bulbs, or simply repot to the next size up. Orchids need to be tight in their pots, so firmly press down on the bark. So this is another one of your favourites. Yes, this is. Uh, it's called Dendrobium, Dendrobium speciosum, but it's an Australian native orchid. They're so easy to grow, but what I love most about these is how chunky they are. Look how fat the bulbs are. Because these are actually canes, we call them pseudo canes. Ah, it's really bursting out of the pot there. Yeah, they absolutely love being snug in their pots. They grow on rocks too. Because that's how they grow naturally in the wild, right? Just on rock faces. On rock faces, on cliffs and at the bottom of a valley. Yeah, yep. they grow really easily. You can even put these into a little bit more sunshine. The leaves are so thick that they don't burn as easily ah. as some other orchids. Yep. And they flower very well every year. They're the kind of plant you can just put out the back under a tree in a rockery and just almost forget about them. So yeah, super easy care. You could really treat this one kind of mean and it will continue to flower for you. For sure, definitely. <laughs> And how old would this one be? This one's about 15 years old, although you don't have to wait 15 years for it to flower. Thank goodness. Yeah, <laughs> it's too long, isn't it? Yeah. But from, say, uh, seed to bloom is about four or five years. Okay. And they flower uh, and are beautifully fragrant as well. There are so many beautiful forms, colours and textures when it comes to orchids. But what does it really mean to you? Oh, I just love looking at orchids. They're so beautiful. They're just part of my soul. They're just gorgeous. They make me happy when I look at them. They remind me of my dad. And the thing with orchids is they take five to eight years before they bloom from seed. So work that he's done seven years ago, I'm just starting to see pop up now. And I'm like, oh, that's dad's, oh, that's dad's. Like the breeding he's been doing, which is just so beautiful. Beautiful.